Story tale about how my stepdad made my mom choose between him and my brothers. Still as little by for our information, I was 13 years old and in 7th grade. And I had two older brothers, Josh and Alex, who were twins and they were both 4 years older than me. Whenever I was 3, my dad left my mom for his dentist. And we never saw him again because he decided to start a whole new family with them. Now, because of that, my older brothers always felt like they had a specific role in my family. Especially because the dice that my mom brought home, they would only last a week. Well, finally, my mom met this guy who was really nice. And she decided that she was going to get married to him. But he despised my older brothers. Mainly because before he moved in with us, my mom would not depend on him for anything. Anything that needed taken care of around the house, my brothers would do it. And we didn't have too much money while this guy was loaded. Like the one time my mom and this guy who weren't in a car, Jerry, got into a fight. So like I said, my mom and Jerry got into this one fight. And it's a super long story, but pretty much all that Jerry realized was that he did not have authority over my mother. And she didn't have to depend on him for anything because my brothers would always be there for her. Now, Alex was more of the shy one. Meanwhile, Josh was super hot-headed and couldn't deal with anybody's bullshit. And fast forward, my mom and Jerry live in together. That's when we realized that Jerry was super abusive. And Jerry knew that he could pick on Alex wherever he wanted because he wasn't going to do shit. And most of the time, Josh wasn't home because he literally hated Jerry. The one time Alex came home and he did really bad on this one test. And Jerry was like, oh, he needs to learn discipline, blah, blah, blah. The next day, we all were sitting down for breakfast and we saw Alex from downstairs with a black eye. And that's whenever Josh flicked the fuck out. He grabbed Jerry, ripped him across the fucking table, and threatened him with a kitchen knife and my mom called the cops. So like I said, he said he needed to teach some discipline, so he literally beat the shit out of Alex. And we all didn't know until he came downstairs the one morning for breakfast. And that's whenever Josh lit the hell out, he threatened Jerry with a knife. After that, my mom called the cops. We didn't really do anything but try to de-escalate the situation. But after that, Jerry caught a family kneeing down to the kicking table. And he was like, I will not deal with this level of disrespect in this house. He was like, you need to choose between me or them. She was like, well, not that I choose between me or my kids. And he was like, well, then you need to choose them leaving the house. They're about to be 18. They can leave and get their own place. So my mom ended up choosing Jerry because Jerry had a lot of money. And my brothers weren't really that mad about it because it got them out of the house. And my mom would send them a lot of money every month. And Jerry never knew about it. But now instead of him being abusive towards my brothers, he's way more abusive towards my mom. So we tell about why I will never go Black Friday shopping ever again. So a little background information, I was 13 and in 8th grade. And my best friends and I were super excited because we'd never been back Friday shopping before. So we had a plan that all of us would spend the night at my house and my mom would drive us to the mall at 4 in the morning. So fast forward, it's 4 in the morning and my friends and I are ready to go to the mall and my mom came with us but we didn't stay with her the whole time. So after we were walking to the first store, we realized that there were these three guys behind us that have kind of been following us around since we got into the mall. But we just think it's a coincidence because you know it's Black Friday, the mall is packed. There are obviously going to be people going the same exact way as us. So we go into the first door, we get what we want to get, and the men didn't follow us in there. But as we're making our way to the next door, we realize that they're following us again. It was like they waited outside the first door for us to come out. So then we decided that we were going to walk around one of the kiosks a few times to see if they were really following us. And of course they were, so we went into another store and they didn't follow us in that one either. So I went to one of the workers and I asked if they could possibly like call security or something. Because there are these guys following us and she said yeah. So I guess that my friends and I go into the one store and of course they don't follow us in there. So we asked an employee if they can call security. So whenever security got there, I told them that these guys had been following us around since we got into the mall. And then security's like, well, where's your mother? Acting like it was our fault that we could be kidnapped for not being with my mom. So after that, he's like, all right, just go find your mom, you know, I'll talk to them. So I call my mom and I'm like, hey, where are you? Of course, she's on the whole other side of the mall. So my friends and I are going to meet her on the other side of the mall. And we look back to see if the security guard was talking to them. And literally, the security guard just walked out of the store and went the complete opposite way. So we walk into the security guard and we're like, you didn't even talk to him. And then he turns around, rolls his eyes, goes over and starts talking to these guys and then we continue to the store that my mom was at whenever we decide to stop at Starbucks to get something to drink. So after 10 minutes of waiting in line, you know, we turn around and we see these guys standing at the end of the line just staring at us. So we get out of the line and we decide to just go straight to the store that my mom was at. And when we got there, we told her what was going on. So she was like, okay, let me get these three things and then we can leave. So like I said, we got out of the line and Ellie went straight to the store that my mom was at and she was like, okay, just let me get these few things and then we can leave. So we start walking towards the exit and then I'm like, mom, they're still following us. So she turns around and she realizes they're literally standing two feet behind us but we decided to go into one of the stores and we asked one of the employees if they could also call the head of security and whenever head of security got there she literally tore them a new you know what 
after that, my mom tries to go and point out the guys and they're not standing there anymore. So they're like, well, what do you want us to do? And then my mom's like, well, you can walk us out to our car. So they walk us out to our car and then they stand there while we're getting in. My mom starts the car and she starts backing up and we've literally run over something. And all of a sudden we hear like screaming and moaning and the security guards look under the car and literally one of the guys who was following us is literally laying under our cars with a knife. And as soon as that happened, there was literally a van parked right across from our car. The van drove away really fast, but the police ended up catching up to it and they found like eight girls in that van. Story I'm about how my boyfriend was hiding his three-year relationship from me. So a little background information, I was 18 and a senior in high school. And in the middle of the school year, I had a new student in my fourth period class who were to be called Jose and he was 17 years old and in her 11th grade. Now he wasn't technically new because I'd seen him around school and everything like that. But up until this point, neither of us knew that each other existed. So he gets introduced to the class, blah, blah, blah. He sits at the very back of the room. And I knew that this man was going to be my boyfriend. So when I got home that day, I was texting my friend about him. Thankfully, she gave me his Snapchat. That's where we were talking and elevators did brought him up. Now, in my school, you were not allowed to use the elevators unless you're injured or for some other reason. Well, he was talking about how he always used elevators and nobody really cared. So I meet her with the elevator the next day and blah, blah, blah. We start flirting. And this life of him and I being super close, like we would FaceTime every day. We would only sit together at lunch and class. So like I said, every day after that, him and I were pretty much inseparable. We would FaceTime literally 24-7. We would always sit together during lunch, during class. Well, the one day I'm sitting in my homeroom and he comes in and he asks me to be his girlfriend. Of course, I said yes. So fast forward to Howley and my family was having up candy and he was kind of truth retreating with his family because he had younger siblings. And this is where our families were supposed to meet, but he didn't end up coming to my neighborhood, which I was super happy about. Well, then fast forward to my birthday. Our families were supposed to meet again, but it didn't end up happening again. And I wasn't really sure if this was the reason why things got leered between him and I. The one night I was over at my friend's house and Jose's on FaceTime with me. And I was talking you about how I could play from up with you when I could hang out. And he literally just didn't mean to say anything. So I was like, okay, is that a no? So then he was like, uh, I don't know, I write me busy, blah, 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 blah. So like I said, him and I are on FaceTime, I'm asking him if he loves to hang out, and he's being super weird about it, being super standoffish. Well, fast forward a little bit, he seemed like he wasn't interested in me anymore, and it really hurt my feelings, obviously. So he didn't talk to me the rest of the day, and then he packs for even next day. And he was telling me how different we are and how we barely have anything in common and how we rushed into things. Pretty much a bunch of shitty excuses as to why he begs that we should break up. Well, after that, him and I don't speak for a few days and then I have a fake account on Instagram. And after our breakup, I viewed his story the one day. So that I'm looking at his Instagram story, he posted a picture of another girl with a heart. And then I found her account and she had pictures of them dating back from like two years ago. Now, still to this day, I don't know if he was cheating on her or if they were on a break or whatever, but I also thought that it was weird that they were dating because she was 19 and he was 17. So Rachel of how I came out to my son of lip parents. So a little background information, I was 14 or 15 and I was a freshman in high school. And all throughout middle school, I had been questioning my sexuality because I didn't really know what I was into, as do most kids my age. Well, due to this, I was bullied in school because people would always ask me, oh, do you like boys or girls? And when I would say that I don't know, they would call me flurs. So anytime that I got into a relationship, I would keep it a secret, and the only person that knew was my best friend. But this summer before my freshman year, I got together with my current boyfriend, and we're going to call him Andrew. Andrew and I met through Snapchat for a mutual friend. We started FaceTiming all the time, and we found out that we were in the same area, so we started hanging out all the time as well. Well, eventually, him and I started dating, and after about three or four weeks, we took our relationship a little bit further, and his parents knew that he was gay and that we were in a relationship. But my parents, on the other hand, did not know. So, like I said before, my boyfriend and I had decided to take our relationship a step further, and his parents knew that he was gay and that him and I were in a relationship. But my parents, on the other hand, did not know. They just thought that him and I were best, 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 best friends that hung out every single day. But yeah, my parents thinked that doing the nafti before marriage is a sin, being gay is a sin. Pretty much doing anything is a sin. So the one they have us in my room watching were Polish Drag Race. By the way, I don't know if I pronounce that right. And then my mom walks in and she says, I don't want you watching these men in wigs and heels. 
acting like females, blah, 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 that's a sin. Like, mom, go get a fucking life. Thanks. And then she says, if I find out you're a part of this, you're gonna need God and Jesus to protect you from me. So my boyfriend and I are in complete shock. Well, then I finally decided that I was going to grow some balls and tell my mom that I was a part of that community. So like I said, my mom was like, if you're a part of this community, you're gonna need God and Jesus to protect you from me. And I was really upset. I started crying and my boyfriend, he's like comforting me. I finally decided to grow some balls and tell her that I was in fact a part of the community. Well, um, I ended up getting my off the youth. They also told me that they wanted to take me to a priest to get an exorcism. So I basically moved out of my parents' house and I moved into my uncle's house who was a part of the LGBTQ community. And he's in full support of my boyfriend and I's relationship. I blocked both of my parents and I haven't talked to them ever since I moved out. Well, that's a lie. The only time that I did talk to them was to wish them a happy Father's Day and happy Father's Day. But other than that, I decided that I want to be happy and to be happy, I had to keep them out of my life. Story time about my weird soulmate. So a little bit of round information, I was 17 years old and a junior in high school. Yes, I was 17 and I was being charged as an adult. So I was in with a bunch of women. Well, one night after dinner, my cellmates and I are watching true crime shows because that's what you do when you're in jail. Watch true crime and CSI and all that shit. Anyway, so we're watching our shows and we see a new girl come in. She's got her blanket packed and we're all being warm and welcoming. And immediately, all of us could sense that something was off with this chick. Immediately, she starts going off about how she has a problem with the TV show we're watching. She did not like the fact that we were watching crime shows. She was like, oh my gosh, you guys really need to turn this off like right now. Loki found I was go see around there or some shit. But yeah, she was just being super paranoid and we're sitting there like, girl, we have 10 channels. Seven of them are going to be true crime and two of them are the news. Oh, and the other channel was Black and White Babies and nobody wanted to watch that shit. So they asked her if she unalived someone. So like I said, I asked her if she unalived someone before because only somebody who unalived somebody would be triggered over us watching true crime. But she completely ignores me. So the first night something happened with this girl, it was low key, um, very, very weird. Me and my other cellmates were like, this girl's weird as hell, why is she here? And then the next day was the icing on the cake. So it was cleavy day and we're all cleaning our stuff. And this girl just starts cleaning the weirdest things like the inside of trash cans and shit that didn't need to be cleaned. And then it started getting creepy. Not weird, creepy. She put a paper towel over the drains because the voices were too loud. And then she would walk around the park talking about death and carnage. And if y'all know what carnage means, it pretty much just needs unaliving a lot of people. So this was super bad vibes, obviously. Now when you're in jail, of course you were going to ask what you're doing time for. And if you don't say, you're ever come off as sketchy. So we're asking this girl, hey, what are you in for? And she would not give us a straight answer. Well, while she was at a visit, we went through her things. So like I said, we asked her what she was in for and she didn't answer. So we found that weird as heck. So then she went for a visit and we searched her stuff and found her paperwork. We found out that she was in because she attempted to unalive her husband in which he got a restraining order. So at this point, um, we're like, this is weird as hell, and she's the doe, like she's Abigail. So now the entire pod comes together, and every single one of us wrote a letter pleading the staff to get this crazy you-know-what out of our pod. We all folded them up in the little paper kites, and we sent them to the guards. We were ringing the doorbell like crazy, and we told them what happened, and no questions asked, she was gone. Every time I was the toxic best friend, the little background information by the 16 and a sophomore in high school. And at the beginning of the year, I met this girl who we're gonna call Riley. Riley and I hit it off straight away. Like a week after knowing each other, she knew everything about Lee and I knew everything about her. Well, then she tells me about the star that she's talking to, who we're gonna call Jay. She said that they would hook up sometimes and he would text her sometimes. But she said that I couldn't tell anybody because he said that it had to be a secret. So I tried telling her that he sounded like a fuck boy but she decided she was gonna do whatever she wanted and I was like, okay. So fast forward to the end of the year, she adds me on Snapchat. Okay, don't get me wrong, he was really hot, but I had my own thing going on, so I really didn't pay that much attention to him. And I thought you need the ad of me on Snapchat to be like, oh my God, I really like your best friend. And then I also was caught between a rock and a hard place. Do I tell my best friend that the guy that she likes she's having me on Snapchat? Or do I lie to her? Well, I was gonna tell her until I got a Snapchat so like I said, I didn't know whether I should tell her that he added me on Snapchat or if I should. And I was going to until I got a Snapchat from him saying, hey, you're really pretty. Um, I think we should talk sometime. So I ended up telling her about it because I felt really bad. 
And she was like, this is like, can't trust girls. Like, you need to unadd him right now. Like, fucking block him. And I'm like, I don't even do anything. Like, what the fuck? So whatever, I end up blocking him. It's fine. Until he texts me one day. And he's like, hey, it's Jay. Um, I think he blocked me on Snapchat. Oh, no. And him and I had topped a little bit in school and I kind of started to like him. Well, fast forward, him and I ended up hooking up a few times. We were talking a lot and he hadn't been texting Riley as much. Well, the one night while I was sleeping over her house, my phone was going off a lot and I didn't think to delete any of the messages. So like I said, I was sleeping over her house the one night, my phone was blowing up and she knows my password and everything. And I stupidly did not delete the text messages between Jay and I. And I kid you not, I wake up to a slap across the face. It felt like she slapped me with her fist and it looked like it too because I had a black eye. So I woke up and she's like, what the fuck? Like, I hate you so much. Like, why would you do this? And I look down and she has my phone right in her hand on the text messages with Jay. And I ended up feeling really bad because she started crying saying that like, I knew that she liked him a lot. And I also knew the reason why he wasn't texting her as much. So then she ran on surf and she told her mom. And the next thing I know, I had her, her mom, and her three other sisters screaming at me. And then I got blocked by Jay because she wasn't supposed to know and she leaked his nudes. So are you living on my extremely creepy neighbors? So a little background information, I was 12 years old and I was in 6th grade. And my family and I lived in a really small town where everyone knew everyone. But our new neighbors had been building their house next to us for the past 4 years. And finally when they were done with the house, this house was huge. I mean probably because there were like 8 people moving into the house. There was the mom, the dad, 4 kids, and their grandparents. So like eight people. But I was super excited because I was like, okay, this is awesome. I get to meet some new friends. But after two weeks of not seeing anybody playing in the backyard or anybody on the school bus, I started to think that their family was super fucking weird. And everyone in our neighborhood liked to gossip. And everyone was saying how they barely see the people who had just moved in. So I mom decided to take one for the team and make some brownies, take them over to the house. And I ended up going with her. So we go to the house, we knock on the door. And one of the kids came and opened the door, but the dad ran over and grabbed him like for part two our deal about my extremely creepy neighbors so like i said my mom and i took some brownies over there and one of the kids opened the door and when he opened the door he had a bunch of bruises all over his body the dad came running over and ripped his son from the door and slammed the door in our faces and all you could hear was him screaming at his son so my mom and i went to walk away before the door opened and he was like sorry my son knows better than to open the door to strangers he took the brownies and then i asked him if i could have a sleepover with one of his daughters and he was super hesitant at first but he said that i could only have a sleepover with her if it was at my house and not theirs which my mom was completely completely fine with anyways because she felt that it was a little bit weird that his son had bruises covering his whole body. So that night when she came over to sleep over my house, I asked her how her brothers on others bruises all over his body and she said that he just fell down some stairs. But after that we became best friends and we would literally hang out like five times a week the one day I knocked on their door to ask if she wanted to come over and her dad answered the door and said that she was gone. So like I said, I became best friends with their daughter but the one day I went over her house to ask if she wanted to come over and her dad answered the door and said that she was gone and when I asked when she would be back, she was like, she went to go live with her mom so probably never. Which was super late because she never mentioned that she had another mom. So fast forward two months, my family and I are sitting around the fire pit when we hear someone scream help. But we weren't sure if that's what we were actually hearing because it was so quiet and then all of a sudden we heard someone banging on my neighbor's basement door. You know those metal doors that people usually have outside of their house that lead down basement steps? Yeah, well that's where the banging was coming from so my dad hopped over the fence to see if that's where the screaming was coming from also. And then not even a minute later my dad hopped back over the fence and it looked like he saw a ghost but he ran inside, called 911 because I was so young, the only thing my parents told me about that whole situation was that the girl that I was friends with was so alive and her parents were keeping her in the basement along with two of her other siblings. But then we also found out that they weren't even her real parents. They were kidnapped at the hospital when they were born. Story time about how my boyfriend was seeing another girl behind my back. So a little background information, I was living with my dad and I had just started a new school and I began really good friends with this group of kids and in our friend group there was this boy who we were going to call Alex and him and I hit it off like right away, we had been topping for two months and by the way, during this whole time his friends were telling me how much he loved me and how much he wanted to be with me so eventually him and I started dating 
And of course, like any other tragic love story, I harmed and moved far away because I had to go live with my mom, blah, 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 blah. But since I would visit my dad for the holidays, him and I would still be able to see each other sometimes, which is pretty good for a long distance relationship, especially when you're in school. So I told him about how I had to move and he was really sad that he said that I can trust him. Red five number one, because why would you say that in the first place? There should be no reason on why I have to quote, trust you to be loyal when I'm away. So like I said, I told him that we're gonna have to do long distance and he was sad that he said that he could trust me. And like I said before, why the hell would I have to trust you? Because um, you should just be loyal in general, duh. So I'm like, hey, I wanna spend time with you before I leave, can we hang out? And he was like, oh, sorry, I have plans. But we can hang out later tonight. So I was like, okay, whatever. And a few hours go by, I never did a text from him or call, nothing. So I text him and he's like, sorry, I forgot. So I'm really sad right now, but I forgave him. Um, but click notes here, ladies. If he wanted to, you would. He would have canceled his plans if he really wanted to see you. Anyways, so I moved and fast forward two to three weeks. And Alex and I literally had only been texting, no calls, nothing like that. So I'm talking to one of his friends and one of his friends tells me that he's been talking to this other girl. And he's been telling everybody that he's been wanting to break up with me for weeks because he wants to date friends. So like I said, I was talking to his friend and his friend said that he's been talking to this girl for two to three weeks about the time that I've been gone. And he's been telling everybody about how he wants to break up with me for her. So of course I'm sad and crying and I confront him and he says, oh, she's just a friend, blah, blah, blah. So I press the issue and then he tells me that he lost feelings for me weeks ago. And that the reason why he didn't tell me was because he didn't want to hurt my feelings. Yet he lent the on for two to three weeks. Like, how does that work, Alex? How? Anyway, so I blocked him because there's no way in hell that I'm going to keep talking to a guy that was making fun of me with his friends and telling everybody around him that he wanted to break up with me. That's a rare thing. Straight here about her, my boyfriend cheated on me with his best friend's sister. So a little background information, I was 15 and in ninth grade, and we're gonna call my boyfriend Alex. Alex and I had been together for six months, and at the beginning of our relationship, his best friend, who wanted to call Caleb, him and I literally despised each other. But Alex would always want all three of us to hang out, so we decided that we had to get along. So we decided to keep it civil only when we were with Alex. Well, fast forward, all of a sudden, Caleb's grown-ass sister starts hanging out with Caleb and Alex 24-7. And it was weird because she was like a senior hanging out with a freshman. But I didn't think anything of it at first. Well, then out of nowhere, while I was at school, like a week later, Alex says that him and I need to have a talk. So we start walking away from Caleb, and as we're walking away, Caleb looks at me and gives me, like, this good luck look. Then he told me that he wanted us to take a break. So like I said, he tells me that we need to talk, and then he goes, I think we should take a break. Like, what do you mean, take a break? Well, funny thing, throughout this whole break, he was still being touchy with me, still acting like we were in a whole ass relationship. And the whole time I was acting like I was fine, so that way I didn't want him to feel bad for me and felt like he had to get back together with me. And he was acting like nothing happened, like I said, it was getting to the point where all my friends had started asking if him and I were back together. And I had to be like, no, we're not back together yet. Well, then Friday rolls around, aka two weeks later, and he tells me that he misses me. Shocker. So then he said he wanted to get back together. I said yes, obviously, because I still really liked him and I was a dumbass not to see the red flags. But well, now when I was second time around of us being together, I started to notice the first slice that I didn't notice in the beginning of our relationship. Like the one time he went to the mall with his friends and he gave these girls his chat chat. He wasn't going to tell me about it, but then his friends told me. So like I said, I started noticing red flags. Well, when I had confided him about the Snapchat thing, he told me that he felt bad if he didn't give it to them because he didn't want to be mean. Another red flag is Len, he would never, ever, 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 ever let me touch his phone. Like, if he even saw my eyes look at his phone for point two seconds, he would grab it real quick. Anyways, back to him getting with Caleb's sister. When we had got back together after our break, this one girl came up to me and she was like, hey, I have to tell you something. I didn't think it was going to be anything about my relationship with Alex, but here we go. She does. He broke up with you to hook up with some other girl. So immediately I'm fuming, I go up to him and I'm like, did you break up with me to go and hop up with another girl? He goes, that's to the past, why are you mad about it? Like, mood broken up. I mean, he thought it was okay just to break up whenever you want to go do shit with someone else. Apparently she said that they could do stuff if we broke up, but they ended up finding out that she does this to all of her little brother's friends. 